as you can see, the fans are very divided on the scoring and the outcome of the Alexander Usyk Maris Breedis fight. Now, in my post fight video, I gave you guys my score. I thought that Maris Breedis won the fight by a wide margin. I even suggested, I didn't flat out say, I even suggested that the fight may have been a robbery and I did flat out say that I think there could have been some political bias in favour of Alexander Usek. However, as I say, there's a big divide, at least on my post-fight video, it's like a 50-50 divide between the fans who fought Usek won and the fans who fought Bradis won. But there isn't really a big divide in terms of the boxing press. The boxing press all seem to think it was relatively close, but most of them were not complaining about the fact that Usek got the decision. So I had to take that into account. But the thing that swung it for me, the reason why I'm making this video is because I visited several channels. I paid attention to several people on social media who I know for a fact are not Usek fanboys, who at least a couple of them, I know for a fact, watched the fight without any sound because you can be influenced by the commentating. It can color your perception. And these people actually scored the fight for Usek or they scored the fight very close. So because I know those people and I trust their judgment and I take the things that they say on board, I had to go and rewatch the fight and maybe look at my own perception, possibly being skewed by something. And having watched the fight for a second time, I do think my perception was a little out in terms of what I was seeing because I was so shocked by how competitive the fight was. I went into this fight thinking that Alexander Usyk would dominate from start to finish, particularly after seeing Bradis' performance against Mike Perez. I was really unimpressed. He wasn't able to land consistent power shots on Mike Perez. So I thought there's no way he's going to be able to land consistent power shots on Alexander Usek. Surely Usek is better defensively than Perez. Surely he's going to be more awkward for Bredis to deal with than Perez. But somehow he wasn't. Somehow Bredis was able to land more power shots more consistently on Usek than he was on Perez. And that shocked me. And I think I was kind of caught up in the shock throughout the fight of just seeing a fight that was far more competitive than I expected. And because of that, I think that did color my perception a bit. Um, that's not to say that I now think Usyk won the fight. No, I still think Bradis won the fight, but it definitely 100% was not a robbery. That's what I can say now, having watched it a second time. And I've watched it in HD again, this time I watched it in 50 frames per second. So in a high frame rate, it's always better to watch fights in a high frame rate if you can get them. So for those of you who want to see the fight again, just type it into YouTube. Uh, Bradis, uh, you know, Usek versus Bradis, 50 frames per second or 50 FPS. And the video will come up. You go watch it there. So the reason I say it was definitely not a robbery is because a lot of the rounds were open to interpretation. No question about it. Um, it, it a lot of the time it came down to what you prefer Usyk was being relatively effective with his jab it wasn't crazy effective it wasn't like Golovkin type jabs he was having a decent amount of success poking away with a jab but he was getting countered I was second time around still very very impressed with Meris Breedis' counters how sharp the counters were how hard they were how well he was picking his counters um, he was throwing a lot of arm punches, particularly in the second half of the fight. He was just throwing his arms out there just to keep them moving um, and then mixing in harder shots when he saw an opportunity to. But when he was just keeping his arms moving, the shots were not really landing on Alexander Usyk. You know, they were just hitting the gloves. But as well as that, a lot of the time, Usyk's jabs were hitting Meris Brady's gloves and hitting his forearms and what have you. So that has to be said. But yeah, it definitely wasn't a robbery. I was wrong to suggest that the fight could have been a robbery in the first place, 
having watched it a second time around. I was just in shock. That's what it was. And I warned people in a lot of my videos to avoid doing this, to avoid having your expectations color what you see in the ring. You know, I was expecting such a one-sided fight that when it was so competitive, I was, I was shocked and I was, <laughs> you know, just in a state of shock. And that colored my perception. And I, I warned people against doing that. I ended up falling for it myself this time around. So even I'm fallible occasionally, 100%. Um, but still, I feel like Bradis won the fight. But those who fought Usyk won the fight. I've got no issue with it having watched it a second time around. Normally when I watch fights a second time around, 95% of the time, 98% of the time, I see the same fight. But occasionally, like with this time, it did seem different to me watching it again. And it did seem like there was a lot of swing rounds there, which could have gone either way in terms of what you prefer. Do you prefer the high work rate and the pressure from Usyk? Or do you prefer the cleaner punching of Breedis? And I still maintain now, having watched it a second time around, Breedis landed the majority of eye-catching shots throughout the fight. But that don't necessarily mean he won the fight. Or that it was a, a you know a whitewash by him. No, but he did land the majority of the eye catching shots that I saw. Usek was landing some nice right hooks here and there. He did land his left hand a few times, but he wasn't that busy with the left hand after he was getting caught with those right hand counters early in the fight. He realized, you know what, I can't keep throwing the left hand because Bradis is really sharp with a right hand counter. So he switched to body shots to rely on his jab and also to the right hook. Because, you know, the right hook was um, obviously on Breedis' left side. So Breedis wasn't countering with his left hook as effectively was, as he was countering with his straight right hand or his uppercut. So, yeah, definitely a much closer fight watching it second time around. And a fight which had a lot of rounds open to interpretation. That's what I will say. So, you know, I'll hold my hands up on that one. Um, but still, I do feel like Breedis won the fight. And in terms of political bias, there may have been political bias in favor of Usek because I'm not saying there was, okay? I'm definitely not saying there was. I'm saying it's possible given the fact that not even one of the judges gave Breedis the fight, you know? Um, did all the judges prefer volume and pressure rather than clean, effective punching? Maybe they did, maybe they just, maybe they legitimately did. But I don't know, I, I liked Breedis' work more than Usek's work, just the quality of it. I liked it more. And it is a balance. It is, what point do you have to get to in terms of the guy throwing more shots that it supersedes or cancels out the guy throwing the better quality punches? You know, that has to be taken into account. So, um, I guess if you go back to Bernard Hopkins versus Joe Calzaghe, it was a situation similar, although I felt Joe Calzaghe beat Bernard Hopkins, but there were a lot of people out there who felt Hopkins won the fight because he was landing the more eye-catching power shots, and he did land the more eye-catching power shots. I just, I just felt like Hopkins didn't land enough of them in that fight. This fight with Breedis and Usek, I feel like Breedis did land enough of the power shots to warrant him getting the victory. But yeah, there were swing rounds in there, a lot of close rounds, which I can't really argue with people giving to Usek, to be honest with you, um, depending on what you prefer. So yeah, just a relatively short video about watching the fight again because of the fact that it, it, it was a different kind of situation this time with regards to the fan reactions. Um, a lot of the time when there's a close fight or a controversial fight or controversial scoring, the fans are split down the line in terms of fanboys generally, you know, whereas in this fight, yeah, there are going to be a certain amount of fanboys. There are definitely a growing number of Usek fanboys. And with Breedis, there's not really that many fanboys of Breedis among the general boxing population, but there's obviously a lot of Latvian uh, Breedis fans. But 
I didn't see that much of that, to be honest with you. I saw a, a few Usyk fanboys here and there, but as I say, I saw a lot of neutral people, people who I know and I trust them as being neutral when it comes to this fight, at least, Usyk and Breedis. And they were telling me, you know what, Hatman? No, nah, I think Usyk won the fight, you know, or he was close. I don't see how it was wide, Hatman. I don't get it. This was a close competitive fight. So, yeah, it, it, that's different than what we normally get with scoring controversies. Normally, all I ever hear from is these fanboys <laughs> who are coming down heavily one way or the other. But when I hear from objective people and they're telling me, hey, man, you need to watch it again, that's when I really have to sit up and listen, you know, which I did this time. So, yeah, I still had, I still had Breedis winning, but I can't argue with anyone who thought that Usek won. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Drop your comments in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out.